Hello everyone. I just thought I would answer some questions that people have sent in um, or they've spoken otherwise um, and just thought I'd talk to you for a little bit about some of the things that I've been asked. So I'll just get started. Um, the first question is, why are you so passionate about shiny happy people in the first place? Are you just trying to make everyone else angry too? Um, I will say I'm not trying to make anyone angry. And I'm not angry. It's not, it's not a matter of being angry. It's a matter of thinking these things are being presented and they're not true. And the truth needs to be presented too. So that people can see both sides and understand that what's being presented is propaganda. And so it's not like I'm angry. It's like I'm passionate, but I'm not angry. So, um, I'm not trying to make people angry, but I am trying to motivate people to speak the truth. So we'll talk about that in a minute, I'm sure. Do you think everyone in Shiny Happy People is lying? No, I do not think everybody in Shiny Happy People is lying. I think there are people that are lying and like there's a list of people I can say, okay, I know they are lying. I know that because I've researched what their stories are I've talked to people around them, I've seen the circumstances, I've investigated their stories, and I know they're lying. There's others who I don't think are lying at all. I think they totally believe the things that they are saying, especially when they're talking about their feelings or about how they felt hurt about something or something like that. I recognize people have feelings and they had bad things happen in their families and that kind of thing. The problem is where they're placing the blame for those things and where shiny happy people is placing blame for those things. Um, I, I don't believe everyone's lying. There are certain people that are lying. And I pretty much say that in my videos, like this person is lying, or I don't think this person is lying, but here's the situation, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, if someone who's asking that question isn't really watching my videos, so. Um, okay, do you think those who claim they were unhappy in ATI or IBLP are lying? Again, no. Everyone has their own experiences in their own families. And some people are expressing some of the things that happened in their families that upset them or some of the rules they had that they didn't like or whatever the case may be. So that doesn't mean they're lying when they're talking about those kinds of things. Um, so no, the answer is no. Do you believe Gothard did anything wrong? Yes. Uh, Gothard isn't Christ, so he does things wrong, just like you and I do things wrong. So it's not like I think he is a faultless person. Um, I think some of the things that have caused some of these um, people having these issues, um, some of that has been where he was naive about how he showed care to somebody and how he would show a loving attitude towards somebody and people were taking those things wrong. Um, he showed care and love toward both males and females and females and males both take those kinds of gestures differently. Um, of course, you also treat males and females differently. Everyone does, even if they don't want to admit it, they, everyone treats males and females differently. And um, so I think that some of the naive ideas in his mind where he had the idea that he was being fatherly and grandfatherly and showing love and care, um, especially when it came to somebody who was having problems with their own father, those especially, those people did have take what he was doing wrong. And he was warned about that at times and he did adjust his behavior. So that's why you hear some people say, well, we knelt in prayer in his office and that was, you know, scary, uncomfortable. And some people are saying, oh, that was sexual abuse, you know, and I'm like, no, that wasn't sexual abuse. But then you talk to other people, no, he never did that. He never did, he never did that. I think the reason is because there was a point at which he was told people are taking these gestures the wrong way. And so he had to adjust himself so that he could avoid people taking these gestures in the wrong way. Um, so, you know, did he do anything wrong? He didn't do anything intentional to make that happen. That was just something that, you know, it was a lapse in judgment maybe about how other people were receiving his love and care. Um, so, you know, but we all do things wrong. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I, he's not a perfect person, you know. Um, what is the reason you would defend IBLP and Gothard to the Duggar fam 
and or the Duggar family. Here's the thing about that, okay? I, I don't see myself as someone who is defending IVLP Gothard, Gothard or the Duggars. I know it turns out that way. It does, that's true, I, I get that. But I didn't set out and say, I'm gonna go defend these people or, these, or this organization or whatever. What I did was say, wait a minute, the things I'm seeing in this program that was widely watched and very, you know, like the highest watched documentary on Amazon or whatever it was, um, they're presenting things that I know are not true. So as I watched Shiny Happy People, I was like, well, that's not true. And then they're taking that premise and they're going over here with it. And I'm like, well, that the premise isn't true. And then this thing, oh, I don't know if that's true or not, because I don't know anything about that, you know? But this over here wasn't true, so something's not right. And then this comes up, well, that's not true, you know? And so it was like one thing after another where it's like, okay, that's not true. I don't know if that's true. That's not true. I don't know if that's true. And it's kind of like that is the way it started out. And then I started to investigate some of those things. And as I did, it kept it was filling in these blanks where it's like, okay, I know already know that's not true, but what about this thing over here? I don't I don't know if that's true or not. And so then I'd investigate and I'd, well, that's not true either. And then this isn't true either. And this and it just kept it was like, this whole thing is not true. <laughs> like this whole thing isn't true. And and so when I found out those things weren't true, it just naturally happens that then that defends IBLP and Gothard and the Duggars because of truth. I, you know, if the truth was that this wasn't true, okay, and then this was true, then I would say, well, that's true. You know, okay, that, that, that's true, and this is not true, and that's true, and this is not true. But there were so many things that were untrue that pointing out a few true things is like irrelevant at this point because the whole program was a piece of propaganda. So why am I defending them? It, it really doesn't have anything to do with defending them. It has to do with what's true and what's not. And when you look at that, it naturally, it's a consequence. It's a consequence of figuring out what was true. And so that's why it, it appeared that I was just going out to defend Gothard and Highville Piano. But if you think about it, why would I do that? I don't, I don't even know. The, I didn't, you know, I had never contacted the Duggars. I never had any interactions with them whatsoever. And same with Gothard. You know, there's no reason that I would do that. That wouldn't make sense. So, I mean, if you think about, this is where, where people start accusing me things. And it's like, did you even logically think out that that... That doesn't make sense if you think out logically, you know, <laughs> why would I do that? There has to be some logic in it, right? Or, or it doesn't make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it isn't true. So, okay. Let's see, what's the next one? Uh, what is the reason you would defend IVLP? And, oh, I already did that one. How do you know the stories that these people are telling are not true? Um, well, it, there's all different reasons. Um, like I said, some of them aren't lying. Some of them really feel the way they feel. If they, the oath outs, for instance, the, that couple, they're not lying, you know. I don't think Lindsay Williams is lying either. I don't think she's, I don't think Heather Heath is lying. I don't think Chad Harris is lying. I, you know, some of them are characterizing things in ways that are, are not true, like the kneeling on the floor and praying isn't sexual abuse, that, you know, she's, but she believes it is, so I'm not, I don't think she's lying. Um, Chad Harris believes, you know, that it was all made up nonsense, the wisdom book, because he believes that, okay. He's not lying, I don't think, <laughs> but he he's mistaken in that, you know, and some of the other things he says he's mistaken, it's not, it's not that he's lying. Um, then you get to Emily Anderson, and you get to Brooke Arnold, and you get to um, Laura, Laura Smith, well, they're lying, okay, they're, that's different. So how do I know that? Because I've researched their stories. That's, that's how I know that, I've researched it. And that's the only way to know, is to research it and find out. So that's how I know, research. Do you think people should check out other videos that contradict yours? Yes, absolutely. Check out the other ones that contradict mine. Um, 
The thing is, if you want to learn the truth about something, you look at what both sides say. You look at, like, you watch Shiny Happy People. That says it. I mean, that's pretty much <laughs> says all the other side already. Or there's, you know, there's probably 100 videos for every video I do that are pushing the other side. I don't care if you look at those. That's fine. But you are getting one side there. You're not getting both sides of the picture. So look at my side too, you know. If you are telling the truth about something, you should not be afraid that someone is going to expose anything that you're saying. There should be no fear about people looking at both sides of the story. And I don't have any fear about that. Um, look at both sides, that's what I say. About anything, like look at both sides. Do you think people should check out, oh, I already, <laughs> don't you believe there is abuse in Christian churches? Sure, sure there is. There is abuse in Christian churches. There's abuse in schools. There's abuse in government. There's abuse in businesses. Sure, I believe there's abuse. And, and I think that when you start to point at something and call that sexual abuse or abuse of any kind or whatever, and it isn't, that belittles what really is. Like real abuse is belittled when something that isn't abuse is also called abuse. And that's another thing that really bothers me about this whole thing. Um, the real victims of abuse should be heard and their stories should be shown and the evidence for their, short, their stories is there. There is evidence for the abuse that some people have suffered under churches and schools and governments and business and so on. There are. But when somebody claims abuse or makes something to be abuse that isn't or uses that word, it belittles real suffering that people really feel and happen to people. And that's not okay. And so every time someone is accused, it doesn't mean they are the criminal. And it doesn't mean the accuser is the victims. Sometimes it's not at all. I just watched a show the other day, it was a 2020, on this woman named, I think her last name was Panini or something like that. Um, I think her name was Sarah Panini, is that right? Anyway, um, and you can see the, the lengths that she went to say she was a victim. And there are, I'm not saying everybody's like that. There are some people in Chinese people that are like that, okay? But the lengths that she went to to claim victimhood are really quite amazing. Um, she beat herself up. She left her family for a long period of time. I don't remember how long. And then she lied to the police. She lied to her husband. She lied to her family. She lied to everybody because she so much wanted to claim victimhood so that she could get sympathy and attention and, and all that. And it was several years later before everything came out in the open and it was shown that she wasn't a victim at all. She made the whole thing up. And that isn't that uncommon. I mean, there are women that do that, mostly women. There's also men. I mean, look at Jesse, Jesse Schmollett or Smollett or whatever his name is. I mean, men do that too. You know, they make it up so that they can be a victim. And the, there's victim points in this culture we have here. And so people do that. And people are doing that on a regular basis right now because of the culture we're living in, the society we're living in, where victims, victimhood is seen as a virtue, you know? So everybody wants to claim it. Um, but so we have to keep in mind that just because someone is accused does not mean that they are guilty. There has to be evidence to show what really happened, and there almost always is. There is evidence, um, even just from the people around them and different things that were going on at the time and so on. There is evidence when it's real and true. And so anyway, that I kind of went off there, didn't I? Okay, why do you think you know about sexual abuse when you haven't experienced it? Um, I am going to be very careful not to tell a lot about myself because this isn't about me. And when somebody tries to make this whole thing about me, they're trying to distract from what's really going on. Um, I will say 
only this. I have experienced it twice in my life as a, as a young teen. And, um, but even if I hadn't, I don't choose to live as a victim of that. I don't choose that to be a part of me. And that doesn't mean everybody handles their situation the same way. It, that's true. That that uh, that is the case. But it doesn't matter what has happened to me. Like it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter if I've experienced something or I haven't experienced something because what I'm presenting doesn't have anything to do with that. It has to do with whether what is being presented is true or not. That's all. So it doesn't matter about me. Okay? So I am not going to make that like I'm a victim too. I am so you know, I have the right to speak because of that. That has nothing to do with what I'm saying. So whether I had been or not is irrelevant and that's why I'm not making an issue of it. Um but I hope that that helps anybody that that would make a difference. Um but I I choose not to make that a part of my being. It's just not going to be. Are you suggesting that ominous music is a bad thing in a documentary? Okay. <laughs> this is because um, I think in the trailer, I say they're using ominous music. And so that's been like talked about. Like, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with using music to create um, an atmosphere about what you're doing. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with ominous music. The problem is when you are taking something that isn't ominous and you're putting ominous music in the background to make it seem ominous. And that's propaganda. That is that is part of what the propaganda thing is like. It's like character it's using a caricature with sound of something. And so that's what I was meaning when I said they're using ominous music in the background. You know, there's nothing wrong with using music. <laughs> I do it, so obviously, I don't, you know, logically, I, that isn't a problem, right? Um, but it's when you're using it to create an idea that is false. And that's what I was talking about in that situation. Okay, I've only got about four more questions here. So if you have a question and you would like me to answer it on one of these question and answer sessions, you know, you can write it below or you can just write me at holly at mommyanswerlady.com. How can you claim to know about IBLP if you weren't involved in it? That is an interesting question. I've been asked that more than once. And I, I think to myself, does the same person who's asking that question ask that of the producers of Shiny Happy People? They weren't in IBLP either. And they made a whole four-part docuseries about it. How did they do that? How did they learn about IBLP? Well, they talked to people right? They talk to people. Now they had an agenda about what kind of people they were going to talk to because I've heard that they talked to a few other people and those people were not against it. So they didn't pursue the interviews with them. Well, they wanted to talk to people that were against it and that's the people they put on, you know, and that's the people that they promoted in, in their documentary because they had an agenda, which is was obvious um how did i learn about it i learned about it because i have some of their materials here i have had them for years actually i didn't even realize i had some of them um because they just kind of sit on our bookshelf or whatever you know um but they are really good materials because like, i've been looking through them like wow this is pretty good <laughs> pretty good stuff um also because i did go to a basic and an advanced seminar um decades ago and uh, I, I got a lot of good things from it. I thought it was good. Um, that doesn't mean I agreed with everything. There were things that I thought, well, I don't quite agree with that. You know, and this over here, oh, this is a really good concept. I like this concept. <clears throat> so, you know. Um, but then, how do I know about IBLP? Well, because I talked to people and interviewed people and researched their materials and went through the seminar again, uh, the basic and most of the advanced. I've gone through again and, you know, looked it up. That's how I know about it. 
you know? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, here's the, here's the thing. There's two things that could be, you know, from the opposition standpoint. Either you know about it because you were in it. And then if you say it wasn't all these bad things, you're brainwashed. And that's why you say that. If you're not in it, well, how can you say it? You weren't in it. So you don't have anything to say. So the only option is you were in it and it's bad. There's no other options to think. There's no other <laughs> there's no other possible mindset to have, you know. Um, that's just not logical either. That's not a reasonable thing. Okay, doesn't the truth speak for itself? Why do you need to do this? Um, I think that somebody that would be saying that is probably somebody who's a Christian because they're thinking the truth speaks for itself. And that's, you know, I'm not saying that's the only Christians think that, but that tends to be the way Christians think. Um, and I would say to that, does the gospel speak for itself? Or do you have to go out and speak the gospel? Like if you're a Christian, you're supposed to go out and speak the gospel and then it speaks for itself once it's presented. And so I would say to that, the truth cannot speak for itself as if it isn't allowed to speak. You know, you have to present it first. And that's why people who are on the opposition don't want anyone to watch what I'm doing because the truth does speak for itself. I mean, it lays, you lay it out and there it is. And it does speak for itself, but it has to be laid out first, right? And so people don't want, you know, don't watch her stuff, you know, of course, they don't want that other side to be shown. On, on, on my end, I'm like, go ahead and watch both sides because the truth speaks for itself and people will see that once they open their mind and look at both sides, then it's, it's obvious what's true. So the truth does speak for itself. Once it's presented, it does, okay. This is the last question that I have right now. What do you think about Josh Duggar and his crimes? I think about Josh Duggar the way that I think about most things that I don't know a lot about. <laughs> um, as far as Josh Duggar goes, um, I know there are things he's done wrong. He admitted some things that he did wrong. Um, part of the whole reason that any of this even happened as far as him being exposed or whatever is because he went to his parents himself to confess things he was doing that were wrong. Um, and so I think generally that shows that he usually will admit something if he's doing it wrong, but that doesn't mean he always does. Maybe he's done things wrong and he hasn't admitted some of them. I don't know. Um, but the thing with Josh's crimes are, are kind of a thing where it's like, um, it is kind of irrelevant to what I'm doing <laughs> because his behavior or any one person's behavior is their choice to make. And it does, I know shiny happy people tried to make it seem like Josh did all these horrible things, therefore IBLP and Gothard are bad and fundamentalist Christians are bad. You know, linking those things together in some way and they kept trying to do that throughout their program. And I don't see it that way. No, Josh made decisions that were wrong and did things himself that were wrong. Now I wrote Josh a letter and invited him to tell his side of the story to me if he wanted to. And in my view, it's like, if he doesn't answer, I'm not gonna go into his thing because it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to the situation. If he did it all and he's guilty of all of it, okay, he's guilty of all of it. And it still doesn't have anything to do with IBLP or Gothard or whatever. They didn't teach him to do that. They didn't prompt him to do that. He wasn't raised to do that. It isn't a Duggar uh, parent's fault. It's irrelevant. It Okay, and if he didn't do it, then shiny happy people wouldn't know that. The producers wouldn't know that. They weren't lying about that, except the Danica Dillon thing. They were totally lying about that. They knew that wasn't true, which is, a, you know, I have a video about that. But as far as his other crimes, if they don't know if they're true or not, they assume they are because they believe everything they hear from the media that's negative towards Christians anyway. So, they, you know, they're going to believe it regardless. Um, but as far as me personally, I don't know. 
you know, if the media says it happened, am I going to say, oh, well, the media said it happened? No, <laughs> clearly not. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I wouldn't know if that's true or not. So as far as Josh goes, I hope that he didn't do all the things that that he was accused of. Um, I know that he did some of them because he said so. Uh, the other things, I don't know. And if it were relevant to what I'm trying to say about all of this, then I would take the time. But you know, there's only me. I don't have a research team. Like the people who are backed by Amazon, they have money. They have they can hire people to look into things and to find articles for them and to go research and stuff like I don't have that. I have me. So I have to choose what is the most important thing to research. What's the most important thing to investigate? What's the most important thing to take my time with? And his crimes aren't anything that are, is relevant enough for me to take my time to look at. So that's why I have to say I can't speak to his crimes other than the ones that he said he did. And the ones he said he did, both sides say the, the same thing. So, you know, obviously that would be true. But when there's a conflict and he says he didn't do these things and these people say he did do things and that stuff I don't know. And frankly, I don't care enough about it to spend my time researching all of it. When in the end, it doesn't make any difference to what I'm doing. So um, if Josh himself wanted to talk to me, I would totally change that view and see what he has to say. And I would love to hear what he has to say about the relevancy of IBLP and Gothard to his behavior. So far, there's no evidence that there's any relevancy to it whatsoever. So if there was, I would like to hear from him that there is, but I, I don't believe that's true. I don't, I don't see any evidence of it. Okay, so that's all I got for the question and answers today. If if you all have more questions um, and you want me to answer them, um, I might do another video later and answer them for you. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.